the gateway to the West, Cardinal Nation. St. Louis, Missouri is home to some of the most brilliant doctors in the world. These doctors are pushing science to its limits, healing patients in new, innovative ways, and doing it at the same time they're teaching the next generation of doctors how to save lives. Meet SLU Care physicians Dr. Kyle Shu, a plastics microsurgeon and one of the few physicians in the Midwest who is reattaching vessels the size of an eyelash in order to give lymphedema patients relief and results no one thought possible. Dr. Teresa Swartz, a breast surgical oncologist who works closely with Dr. Shu to not only help breast patients manage their lymphedema, but perform operations to help prevent it and Dr. Damien Nicolau, an orthopedic trauma surgeon who gets patients stable enough for Dr. Shu to operate. This is the science of healing. When I first noticed that something was wrong with my legs, I was 24. I was actually working at the gym, and one morning I woke up and my legs were just swollen. Um, I didn't know what was going on. I couldn't barely get down my steps. I felt a heaviness to my arm. I wasn't quite sure why that was. I knew what lymphedema was, but I didn't know that that's what was happening to me. There was there was like a ridge around the top above my ankle, and it was it was quite profound. And he said, "I'm pretty sure you have lymphedema." Never heard of lymphedema before. I looked it up, and I was of course it was very upsetting. A lymphedema is a complex chronic condition where there's a blockage of the lymphatic system that leads to swelling, which then leads to inflammation and then uh, fat and fibrosis. The lymphatic system is actually quite difficult to understand or comprehend because there's nothing tangible to see. So lymphatic vessels run right underneath the skin and they carry protein and water and their job is to actually rid bacteria. So they can go down to where you've got an infection on a finger, be able to drop off things to help that infection heal and then clear the waste and clear the bacteria. When you have lymphedema, I mean, you feel the fullness. You feel the cramping every single day. You feel the pain. It's hard to perform daily activities, hard to comb their hair, button their shirts, hold things. It's hard to find clothes that fit, especially if you have lymphedema in your legs. It can be exhausting to be in physical therapy five days a week for years on end. It can be exhausting to always have to have a compression sleeve on or to have chronic infections because that arm is so swollen and can't drain and can't clear infections like it should. It really hurts their quality of life because they spend 40 to 70 hours a week managing the lymphedema. Think about it, it's a full-time job just to manage the lymphedema. Yeah, I couldn't wait until the end of the day so that I could get home and then get in my compression machine. I haven't worn shorts in public in a really long time. <laughs> there are patients that get admitted with infections that need IV antibiotics or they're constantly on some kind of prophylactic antibiotic to prevent an infection. So yes, not having the ability to clear away bacteria um, makes it a scary situation. I do not think that people understand what it's like to have the fluid in your legs and your arms, your body. You can get lymphedema in two ways. One is called primary lymphedema where you're actually born with abnormal lymphatics. So there's kids that are two or three that have lymphedema. And then there's secondary lymphedema, which comes from damage to the lymphatic system. So the most common thing that we see in the United States is the treatment of breast cancer. There are 10 million people in the United States that have lymphedema, and less than 10% actually get real treatment, the correct treatment for it. Now with SLU Care's uh, lymphedema program, previously patients were just told that there's no hope for the condition. You just have to live with it. Now we're able to provide hope for these patients with this new procedure. So about four years ago, I was working upstairs on an inpatient and I felt like my right hip was just giving out every once in a while. I was real tired, I didn't know what was going on. And I realized that my thighs were more swollen. And I was like, I think my lymphedema is moving up. She had in both of her lower extremities from the hips all the way down to her feet. Her skin was very tight, very hard very painful. She had some scarring from some previous surgeries that was also impairing the lymphatic flow. She was very miserable. In the past, the only treatments for lymphedema was really uh, lymphedema therapy, compression, massage. Uh, it does control the lymphedema, but it doesn't help reverse the disease. But now we have surgical options that can actually improve, not cure it, but improve the quality of life in patients with lymphedema. There's two types of surgeries that we do. There's surgeries that treat the fluid, and then there's surgeries that treat the fat and fibrosis. 
for the fluid, there's two options. One is called lymphovenous bypass. The other surgery is called vascularized lymph node transplant. For the bypass procedure, what we do is we bypass the lymphatics into the veins so that if there's a clogged lymphatic or there's a lymphatic that's um, not flowing anymore, we bypass into the veins so that it can shunt the fluid back into the venous system. It's almost like if a river is blocked and it's still flowing, we can provide a bypass into the ocean so it dumps the fluid away. The other surgery we provide is called lymph node transplant. Literally what we do is we take lymph nodes from another part of the body. Usually I take them from under the chin or above your collarbone. Um, and then transplant it to your arm or legs, and it acts like a pump, and it sucks the fluid away into the venous system. The second thing it does is also it causes your body to form new lymphatics. The other type of surgery we do is for the treatment of the uh, fibrosis and fat, and that includes liposuction to remove that, and uh, direct excision, meaning cutting out the, the fat and fibrosis. Everything that Dr. Zhu is doing for lymphedema patients is, is nothing short of spectacular. There's no way to just fix lymphedema. There's a way to manage it, but not fix it. And what Dr. Zhu is able to do is replenish that lymphatic drainage of the arm or of the chest wall. And he can even do it in other patients with other extremities. Dr. Zhu was actually working in another clinic and he was on one of our services in orthopedics. Kathy sends an email out and there's a picture of Dr. Shu. And I'm thinking, I know this man. And I walked by the medical office one day and I asked if I could talk to him. I'm like, Dr. Shu, can I talk to you? She said, oh, I have lymphedema. And I was like, oh, I take care of patients with lymphedema. Why don't you come and see me? I mean, 14 years of pain, swelling, um, not being able to run, things like that. And uh, he got me in and great, great doctor. She was having a lot of symptoms because she she's a nurse, so she's on her legs, you know, 12 hours a, a day, and she was getting numbness and tingling her feet, swelling, pain, and it was hard for her to do her job. So I told her maybe we can try this lymphovenous bypass, and she was excited, and and we did it. The bypass is very difficult because it requires very small suture that's thinner than your eyelash and we're suturing lymphatics which are less than a millimeter. So these are tiny and bypassing to veins that are about a millimeter. But we call this a super microsurgery which is very small sutures, very small vessels. A strand of hair, that's the, this, the fact that we have instruments and he is that precise to get in there and do that is amazing. You have to uh, really concentrate and because um, we want to make sure that we do a good bypass for these patients. It was long <laughs> and tiresome, but I was excited. We tried to do one leg at a time just so that she can recover. We, we first worked on one of her legs and we were able to do a few bypasses. And right after surgery, her swelling was improving. And the most important thing that she told me was after 12 hours of walking, her legs, she doesn't have numbness and tingling. She doesn't have that discomfort anymore. It went great, it went great. I'm not as swollen. The pain in my feet has decreased. The numbness has decreased. The cramping has decreased. So to me, it's a great improvement. I saw her about four weeks after her surgery for the first visit, and her first comment to me at that point was, I already have less cramping in my leg. And when I started my manual lymphatic drainage massage on that visit, her calf was already softer than it had been in all of the previous years that I had worked with her. Actually, my right leg has never been smaller than my left leg in 14 years, and my right leg is actually smaller now than my left. Patients do complain that they have people just asking them, you know, why is your arm or your leg swollen? And it does uh, affect their self-image. I don't know what being normal is like. I don't know what, you know, having no pain feels like, but it's something I've pushed through every single day and it's, it's definitely decreased, so it's awesome. And she was happy, so we decided to do the second leg. In two days, I'm having my second surgery, which will be on the left leg, uh, hopefully not as fibrotic as my right leg. I'm hoping it means that I can last longer on the elliptical, no, I'm just kidding, that I can last longer when, with, with exercising and playing and being outside enjoying my family and enjoying like time with my son. I met Kathy when we were developing this lymphedema program through SLU Care. You know, as a lymphedema therapist for over 15 years, this was unheard of when I started treating patients 15 years ago. And right away when we met, we clicked. She loves taking care of these patients and I was passionate about lymphedema surgery, so we were just a good team. When I first heard that he was here and gonna be starting these surgeries, 
I cannot tell you how excited I was and how all of our therapists were just to have some other avenue to help these patients because we know it's a lifetime disease and we want them to have the best quality of life that they possibly can. I've gone to multiple support groups that she leads just to meet the patients and to see what kind of symptoms that they have and what kind of problems they have so that we can help them the best we could. And then she also came to one of my surgeries to observe to see what I do. If I could take off compressions and actually wear a dress, maybe one above my knees, that would be normal. Because I haven't done that in, in 14 years. I started riding um, a motorcycle on my own. It's been about 10 years ago, eight years ago. I'd run out of gas, filled my bike up, and we was headed into town. And the vehicle in front of me actually ended up having to slam on their brakes. And by the time I realized they stopped, I didn't have enough time to stop myself. So I crashed into the back of the pickup truck. Marcy's injury is one of the worst I had seen during my time here at SLU. Her constellation of injuries between her segmental femur and then as well as her tibia, which is in four different fragments. One of them was flipped 90 degrees was really bad, then you combine that with all the soft tissue stripping of her leg, loss of skin, loss of muscle, was just really horrific. I really um, kind of accepted at the very beginning that I may not go home with my leg because it looked like an accordion and my foot was kind of like bent back underneath me. She had uh, multiple fractures of her femur, multiple fractures of her tibia with degloving, which means that her just leg was Pretty much all you could see was the bone, all the skin, all the muscle was just taken right off of it. Really bad injury. And they took me into surgery for my femur and the doctor said that they would probably have to take the bottom part of my leg. And I told him I understand, but if there's any possible way you can save my leg, I am all in. <laughs> she underwent three irrigation embriefments with my partner, Dr. Boudreau, and then I did another four. These are all separate surgeries. And then final with the definitive fixation required a large plate going down the entire length of her tibia to attach all those four fragments as well as, well as smaller plates to also supplement each level of those fractures to hold that all together. So we had to do a very intricate surgery where, uh, number one, she only had one blood vessel going to her leg, meaning that was the most critical vessel. So in order to get out of the zone of injury, we actually had to do it, did a bypass by taking a blood vessel from her other leg in order to create a bypass from above her knee towards the lower leg. Once we did that, we took, a, uh, took her muscle from her back, two different muscles in order to cover uh, the leg by transplanting these muscles to the leg and connecting it to the bypass. We were all really excited, but we were always tentative to say, we still got a, the bone to heal, we gotta make sure that piece that was flipped 90 degrees is still viable, I and mean, that's not gonna die off in your leg, and that, you know, until we know that can heal, we won't know, if, you know how well you're gonna do, if you're gonna walk again, or if we're gonna have to do more surgeries to do bone transport or something else in there. I, I believe if she hadn't come here to SLU and be treated by our, our team of physicians, that she might not still have her leg. One of the nurses I had in the ICU, she said, I'll never forget the first words you said when you were, woke up was, I still have my leg. They told me they were gonna cut it off. And so, I mean, yeah, I, I, cause I really, I really had accepted it, it was gone. I was very pleased, especially what we were working with and what we were dealing with, and then to see the end result when Dr. Zhu got the coverage of it, with skin graft over it. She did great. We were able to get her out of the hospital. She's walking. However, after all the surgery, her foot was swollen because she had lymphedema. Her injury was so bad that all the lymphatics in her lower leg were damaged so that nothing can drain from her foot to her groin. So she had lymphedema in her foot. I suggest that we should do the lymphovenous bypass. And I mean, I really didn't have to think about it because he explained to me, he said, you know, with this surgery, it's gonna make the quality of your leg, quality of life so much better. The surgery went excellent. We were able to do uh, multiple bypasses. It was great because this is early stage lymphedema because she just got it. So these lymphatics were flowing very well. We were able to bypass into the veins and um, after surgery, the swelling improved. Now she's able to wear normal shoes. She's able to walk so, and get back to things that she loved to do. Without Dr. Shu, I, I don't know that my quality of life or my quality of leg, either one, would probably be like it is. I mean, maybe I would have got lucky and got another great doctor. <laughs> I don't know, but 
Um, the technology that he's brought with the lymphedema, it's bound to make so much difference in so many people's lives. It would have been, her outcome would have been much different as far as she might have had more of a painful foot because it just, the, it would just been constantly swollen. And I think people know if they stand on the feet all day and their feet swell, how uncomfortable they are. That would have been her on a daily and then just getting worse as, as the day progresses. So I think for her outcome, even though she would still be walking, she just probably wouldn't be quite as functional as she is and probably not as happy as she is. After, after the accident, laying there thinking I was going to lose my leg and having my leg, I just feel so blessed. I feel so thankful, um, happy. <laughs> It is very emotional because, you know, um, I just, like I said to my doctors, I just, I just want to be able to walk in the yard with my, my little boy again, you know, because I have girls that are older, but I had a little boy that was just three at the time that it happened. And he's five now, and I thought, oh, you know, um, am I ever going to be able to walk out in the yard with him? Am I ever going to be able to take him out to play, you know? We were able to ride bikes this summer went swimming, went to the water park. I mean, I don't feel there's anything I can't do. It, it, it kind of really hits at the heartstrings when you hear that kind of story and what, what you've given back. Not just, hey, we got her back to work, but we gave her back her life with her family and she can still enjoy all the things that she might not have enjoyed if she had lost her leg. I don't know that I would be able to do my job with a prosthetic. Plus, I don't know that I would be as recovered as I am now. You know, I mean, I came back to work last year in April and it felt so good to be back at work. <laughs> I think she's exceeded what I could have hoped for. I think we went beyond hitting a grand slam with her. I think we'd have been happy if she just was kind of hobbling around on this leg and she still kept it. But she's walking now, she's getting back to all of her activities. I think she even wanted to talk about doing some jogging last time I saw her, so that's phenomenal. Grateful that I'm able to get these patients back to doing things they enjoy, whether it's mo riding a motorcycle or playing with their kids or going to work and taking care of patients. It just makes me happy that I'm able to help them with this. I felt a difference between each of my breasts. We went right to work aggressively. We did all the testing. That was at the beginning of November and I knew exactly where I was at by Thanksgiving. One in eight women are affected by breast cancer and the number of women who die from breast cancer is only second to the number of women who die from lung cancer. So it can be a very scary diagnosis and just the thought of having the diagnosis and going through treatment can be very devastating. My symptoms started showing I want to say about February or March the next year. I knew that I felt a heaviness to my arm. I wasn't quite sure why that was. I, I knew what lymphedema was, but I didn't know that that's what was happening to me. I went and interviewed some different physical therapy establishments, and I decided to go to SSM in Columbia, Illinois. So a typical day for me would be to um, go to work in the morning, I would wear a compression sleeve to work every day, which actually just fits right over my arm. As the day would go on, my arm would start to fill up more and more. It at times can hurt and it feels heavy. I couldn't wait until the end of the day so that I could get home, eat, take a bath, and then get in my compression machine. I have a compression machine that has a long sleeve that you put on, you wrap it around your back and it Velcros across your chest. Then you also get into another piece of Velcro that wraps around you in the front. And compression therapy actually starts down here and then it slowly moves up the arm. They told me that I would only need maybe one one hour session, but at its worst, I was doing two, sometimes three, just to get through it and feel like I actually felt relief with it moving the lymphatic fluid out of my body. I had heard them talk about a lymphedema meeting that they have where Dr. Shu would come in and talk to all the patients, but I was unable to go because of work. 
but I kept asking questions, I kept doing research, and then I finally got up the courage enough to make an appointment to go see him. I met Melissa because she was a referral from a, another network in St. Louis for lymphedema. Uh, she had breast cancer and uh, she was treated with a um, axillary dissection, developed lymphedema in her arm. I discussed her with the surgeries and she decided to proceed with the lymphovenous bypass. I, I thought I needed to talk to my oncologist. I went in and I talked to her about it and I told her what I was doing and she goes, I've never heard of this, Melissa. I, this is something I've never heard of. Who is this doctor? And I told her who it was and she said, well, I'm gonna have to call him. And I said, well, great, go ahead and call him. Here's his number. I didn't hear anything back right away so I decided to call the nurse practitioner who works with her. And she goes, oh, Melissa, uh, Cynthia called him and she had the best conversation with him ever. He's actually coming over to do a conference to tell everything about what he does. And I thought, oh my gosh, she goes, well, you're gonna be the first one here that's done it. And so I was pretty proud of that. You know, um, uh, and I said, so I can do, I can do the surgery. And she said, yeah, you can do it. So we, I called his office and we scheduled it for July. Best thing I ever did. Our oncologist um, initially was unsure about the procedure. It is a new uh, procedure, and so she actually called. I called her and she, we talked on the phone and told her about uh, the procedure. And I sent her some papers, and she was excited. And she's like, hey, let's just do this. Amazing, I don't even think, does it enough justice because there are so many women that have lymphedema and suffer with it for years that giving them another option that could potentially clear all of the drainage, all of the swelling, and keep them from being in constant physical therapy or constantly in a compression dressing was, was nothing short of a miracle. He was amazing and uh, he made me feel so comfortable. The good thing is she's earlier stage lymphedema and with earlier stage lymphedema, the bypasses work pretty well. It was an eight hour surgery. My husband said we were the first ones to get there, the last ones to leave. It was successful. At the end, he came in and he told me that he had actually rerouted five of the lymphatic vessels in my arm. And I have had nothing but wonderful things to say about it. Um, my arm is pretty much back to normal. And Melissa improved significantly. The first thing she told me after I think it was two or three weeks is I can wear my wedding ring again. She's, she's beat can't, but breast cancer and now she's uh, fighting lymphedema and we're, we're winning the, the fight. Because as a breast cancer survivor, a lot of women think that once you're done with treatment, it's all behind you. And a lot of times whenever you're finishing up treatment, that's whenever the side effects start to, to show themselves. That's whenever they're dealing with a whole lot more than just the diagnosis. And our next goal is to do liposuction to get her arms smaller and keep it small so that She's able to just enjoy things that she did in her life uh, before all this. I am probably most thankful for SLU Care Physician Group more so than I am of anything that I've ever done or any doctors that I've ever seen. They're, they're the best. They're the ones that have helped me change my life. And I, I can't wait. It's gonna do nothing but get better. So being able to let that arm drain as it should, to get the feeling back in the arm, to have the function back in the arm, that's a great big step to getting them on their road to, to full survivorship. So it's been a month since my surgery, and this is my first day back to physical therapy, and I feel awesome. My leg feels so much better. I'm not gonna, you know, the pain is decreased tremendously. The cramping's decreased. Her leg already felt softer after surgery. She's already reporting that there's less pain and cramping in her calf. That went very well, and I saw her back at two weeks after surgery. She was ready back to work uh, because the surgery just requires small incisions, and she was already having improving in symptoms as well as the uh, the circumference. My plan is once the swelling is controlled is to come back and do liposuction to remove all the, the fat and fibrosis so that we can get her legs even smaller. These surgeries, we know that within the first year they keep making progress. So like I measured her right leg today and it actually went down and I haven't even seen her in a month. So that reduced again. So we can only expect hopefully the same thing or even more for the left leg. We'll see how she does in the next six months to a year and hopefully things will just keep improving for her. 
she said she was gonna get back to actually exercising again and she used to compete in weightlifting and she's thinking about getting back into just better shape. I always thought he was an amazing guy. He is such a great bedside manner and he's so kind and caring and he's super intelligent and you know I, I understood before what the surgery entailed but then watching him in action like sitting over the patient for so many hours doing these teeny tiny intricate surgery like I have the utmost respect for him. He's just an amazing person. I'm so happy that she was able to get back to normal life. He's amazing and he takes the time with everybody that he knows. Before the surgeries, she had so much swelling in her legs that it'd be hard for her to wear uh, high heels. And then after the surgery, she came in before Christmas and said, hey, I think I'm gonna try wearing high heels for the Christmas party. She started crying and it was, it was really emotional. And you know, I was so happy to see that she's able to get back to normal life. I want to run around with my son and my husband and want to go outside and be able to play ball and not, oh, my leg hurts today. That's what I'm excited to see. The most important thing is I'm, I'm excited that Salute Gear helped me develop this program. We are so fortunate to have him come back from microvascular fellowship, and his energy is, to be quite honest, unmatched. I mean, he's he's a huge asset to us here at Salute Care. We don't. It's not only just treating their their condition, but also treating the whole body. So Salute Care gives us that opportunity um, to work together as a group in a small enough fashion to actually make a difference and know our patients on a personal level. You know, some of my partners are. They design implants. Other of our faculty are, you know, they have Air Force rotating through because of the amount of trauma and the, the level of the trauma that we see. The training here is just unbelievable. It really comes down to the people that we bring here to SLU Care, to have physicians that have great ideas that are focused on the patients that we are treating, and then be able to take those forward in a patient-centric manner, but also in a manner that helps more than just their patient population, helps the rest of the of the people who come um, to see SLU Care physicians. A lot of these patients beforehand, they were actually just discouraged that there was nothing that you can do for this problem, they had to just live with it. It has changed my job. It's even changed my conversation up front with patients. I met with someone yesterday that is going to have all the lymph nodes removed under her arm and we have an operation that we can do to help prevent lymphedema from the very start. I think they are just a, a wonderful group of surgeons and physicians. It's nationwide known what, what we do on the trauma level and I think it is because of the collaborative effort amongst all of us. We all love being here, we work hard, and part of the reason why we all do is just because of the people we work with. It's very exciting to be able to tell someone, hey, we have an operation that could potentially prevent lymphedema that we can do at the same time that you're getting your operation for breast cancer. Not a separate procedure, not a watch and wait, not a reactive response to lymphedema, something that we can do in advance. Uh, doing research in lymphedema so that we can help patients and hopefully prevent lymphedema in the future.